Today on Core Conversations, we have James Shaw. James is a Pilates coach from London, England, and it was almost more of a strategy session than even an interview. We talked about how we keep men connected to our classes. We touched on the nervous energy we feel before class and how do we channel that superpower to make our classes awesome. We talked about fears and we talked about the very ultimate question you want to ask anybody. Who are you? Enjoy the conversation. Uh, good morning to you. Good afternoon to me. Yes. <laughs> How are you? Great. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Good, man. So, so, so good to have you on. Thank you for joining me. Should have really checked what my hair looked like before I <laughs> That's okay. I just left mine half up, half down today. So it's <laughs> yeah. a, just a casual uh, look. Yes, it's a casual look. Yeah, yeah exactly. Man, you, um, it, we've, having a couple sites, I realized that I've been following you on my Real Men Do Pilates page for ages. And then I just stumbled across you on Personal Victory. I was like, hey, do we know each other? It's like, <laughs> yes, I've actually known you for a while. Oh, wicked. Yeah. Uh, Nice. So how is your Pilates business going in this quarantine time? I like I'm I want to say I'm very lucky because I'm 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 busy. I'm really busy, you know, so I can yes. um yeah, you know, it's it's going really well and it's just giving me time to think about actually like what I was doing previously to what I am doing now and you know like how it all works and how I can sort of fit both into my life maybe streamlining how I was working before, not running around London teaching at different locations and, yeah, you know, yeah. like how I can make this work more for me. Because obviously at the minute I am just like literally rolling out of bed and teaching. Do you know, yes. like and in London, you can take 45 minutes an hour to get somewhere, do you know, yeah. like, which is not actually a, a good use of time. So yes, yeah, probably not the best business model all the time, right? <laughs> yeah. So looking at uh, time versus money basically you know at the minute that's something what i'm definitely been thinking about um yes. through this uh whole situation so, and for those who don't know you james shaw where do you live cool so i'm i live in east london so okay. um so quite a hip part of town um yeah i lived here for about three years before that I lived in birmingham for near enough 10 years and before that i lived in manchester which is basically if you're going it's down the country i'm moving south Okay. Um, yeah, I uh, started my Pilates journey in Birmingham uh, as, yeah. a, uh, as a practice. So I used to practice uh, with a, a place called Pilates Lounge. Mm -hmm. um, and well, before that, how I actually got into Pilates, if we're speaking about men and Pilates, my yes. previous life, I was a hair colorist. And okay. one of my clients, it was my first Pilates teacher. And she was like, you'll love it, do you know? And I'm like, no, do you know? It doesn't sound like it's for me. It's uh, I've Googled it, it looks a bit, do you know, a bit feminine, do you know? Yes. I, don't, I don't like, well, if you Google Pilates, it's, it's definitely like, as a guy, you're like, mm, don't know if that's for me. Right. Um, and she was like, I'll, she went, I'll do your private. So off I went to my private. And within the first, like, 15 minutes, I was like, I love it. I love how... Smart it is. Even at the back initial James point, Shaw. I could see it was smart. James it wasn't just jumping up and down, England, bashing your body. It was almost just, more yes, of found a yourself. I liked how the like, small interview. movements created big feelings and, connected to our classes. and the rest they say we is like on the nervous yeah. energy we you know, feel before class and how do we and channel then, that um, superpower to make our classes awesome. I was lucky enough we she talked about fears and we talked I already about taught hairdressing. Ultimate so I already had a set of transferable skills of you know like delivery knowledge to people. Yes. Um and she was like, Have you ever thought about becoming a Pilates teacher? And then this is where we were on about the splits. I'm like but I can't become a Pilates teacher. I can't do the splits. Uh, you know, like, like, yeah, yeah. Do you know, like, yeah, like, yeah. And obviously now I look back and I cringe a bit. Do you know, like, <laughs> they have had that thought, you know, knowing what you know now compared to yes. what you knew then. Uh, right, right. Thinking that the only reason you can become a Pilates teacher, but you have to be able to be able to do... The prerequisite. A, a, yeah, a, a yeah, full split. Do you know, yeah, so... Yeah. Uh, yeah, so then that took me on my, uh, the start of my Pilates journey and my education and, you know, like, so. Well, sorry, what was your first Pilates course that you took? So I, with uh, Jay Pilates in London. So it's an independent, um, like, qualification. Joe, the lady who runs it, 
super super lovely do you know like mm -hmm. it would it like great cause uh but it it was a modern qualification and uh, i were always like needed to dig a little bit deeper do you know so then yes. and that journey took me on to um but down the classical route you know just to mm -hmm. sort of understand how like you can learn reform you can learn that you can learn barrel you can learn chair but then how everything is the same do you know it's yes. and that sort of knowledge what i i needed to find you know so that's that's where i went on the hunt down the classical route you know to yes. sort of understand where if you can train somebody uh somebody can't do something on some one piece of equipment you can take them out and bring them on and you know like learn them skill sets to actually progress their practice rather than just yes. trying to beat them over the head with I don't know, a reformer. Do you know you've got to do it? Yes. You've got to do it. Do you know, like, where right. actually, let's break it down. Take, find the skill set, do you know, learn you the skill and then take you back and then go it rather than just trying right. to hammer just the like, first and Yeah. Exactly. You won't be able to do it if you try, do you know, rather than it just being a little, a little like, mm, let's learn you the nuts and bolts and then right. sort of see where you can get from it. Those foundational skills, right, are, are so key. And it's such a different mindset, guys. For those of you who are listening, when we're talking about the mindset between like a group fitness class where you walk in and you want to kind of razzle-dazzle the people with new exercises every week and just throw stuff at them all the time. Once, like you said, James, you go from understanding a few exercises and dive into the classical a little bit more, and then you understand that it's actually a system and that everything's interconnected. Yeah. So, totally. I yeah. what I just didn't understand why like with my like initial training, do you know, like like I used to make my own plans up and I was like, but I don't like why am I making this do you know like why am I yes. making this plan? I understand that you have to put all these elements in. And then I wanted to understand the, the classical system, how it was originally taught, you know, because that's there must have been a reason why it was taught and like yes. Then one, how one exercise sets up the next etc yeah, you know yes. and i know that that's not for everybody's body but it definitely i needed to know that you know i needed to learn that part of the, the pilates history you know like why the original orders were the orders and mm -hmm. then if you want to break it down but you're breaking it down in a with the knowledge of why you broke it down not because you just picked that exercise this exercise and just linked them all together and made yes made your own sort of thing which is nothing totally nothing wrong with that i still do that style of teaching in certain classes for certain people right you know totally but who don't want to run the same order every single time so mm -hmm. i'm not saying it's wrong do you know like it's just more um on the certain people like onto the guy thing i've got certain guys what love the fact that we do the the rep repertoire they love it do you know like yes. i mean i've got certain guys are like i don't want to do the same thing as i did last week do you know mm -hmm. like it so it's right. just gauging where you, where you take them and how you and how like the the person themselves do you know so i'm not going to limit myself yes. to try and just teach the repertoire to the person do you know because obviously i do have a business to um run and i obviously have to retain the person do you know so if mm -hmm. they're telling me they don't want to do the same repertoire each week do you know no, do you know i'm not obviously i'm going to listen no. to what they're saying yes but that's and i think that also speaks to what you're saying about understanding the how the system works and how the exercises are interrelated so you could in theory teach someone the classical say the intermediate mat but then do some exercise on the chair and do some exercise on the ladder and do some exercise in reformer and they walk out saying, okay, I didn't do the same exercise today. It's like, well, actually you did. You did, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? You know, like it's, yeah, you, you just have to, uh, yeah, give them, <laughs> give them what they think they want and give them what they need. You know, like yes. that sort of balance of to, um, to have. So they walk out happy, but obviously working, have worked hard. Yeah. And we've talked about that in the, a lot in the past in the personal training world as well. I mean, I come from you know, fitness and, and PT and we always say that, you know, someone walks in, they're like, oh, I want to get a beach body. And then you see the way their shoulder moves. So you're like, oh, maybe we should do a bit of rehab first. So you're always in this dance between what the person says that they want and what they actually need and keeping them as a client, as you say, at the same time. Yeah, sneaking the little bits in, in between the big bits, you know, yes. like, definitely.
Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. Um, you said something earlier about how smart the system is. Yeah, it definitely, like, it's, like, in the, I like to teach, like, oh, depending on the person, you know, like, like to teach the person in front of me the, the shapes, how to create a shape. Because if you teach them the shape, I can stop teaching just choreography and I can be like, 100, give me 100, now add this, or give me your rolling like a ball and then uh, you can give back. So if you intertwined, you know, like you don't have to just teach this exercise in every single time, you know, all the bits, you can teach yes. them the shape and then be like, oh, can you see how this is this and this combined? You yes, know, like, yes. So teaching them actually about Pilates as well as, you know, giving them a workout. So then yes. it takes the onus off me constantly giving the cues to get them into an exercise where they actually learn. Obviously, I've got lots of people that don't want to learn that, you know, like, right, and it right, is, right. I'd teach the choreography every single time, you know, like, mm -hmm. it's uh, tell yeah. them what to do, how to get any of the setup. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's, but like, nine times out of 10, I like it, like, the, the students I vibe with and like, like, what am I like, core people, like ones what want to know. Yes. And, you know, like, oh my God, it is the same as that exercise. Do you know, like making, mm -hmm. when they actually make the correlation themselves without me even telling them, yes. they're like, this is the same as this. I'm like, oh, do you know, like that's, yes. that's the bit what like fills me with joy because I know how, how Pilates made me feel. And that's definitely something what I want to give to my students yes, on how, it, like, remember how it made you feel on your first ever Pilates mm. class. I want them to feel about every single class, do you know? Yes, you know, it's funny, my first class, it, it crushed me and I was like, it was so hard and it defeated me. And as an athlete, I was like, okay, I'm coming back because I'm not letting this thing kick my butt again. So it's, it's funny how yours was like this wonderful feeling. Mine was like, okay, so <laughs> you won today, I'm coming for you now. And that's what kind of brought me into my Pilates journey is recognizing how weak I actually am when I thought I was strong. Yeah, no, like you, you can't like guys, like super, super strong guys. I and mean, then you get them in a Pilates studio and you start like actually connecting them and they're like, oh my God, do you know, like, why can't I do, do you know? Um, and a pull up, do you know, like, you from, like, yeah. like, like, and they're like, what? what? Do you, and it's not about brute strength, do you know, no. like it's like you can be super, super strong, but you know, like it's not about the strength of the exterior, it's about the strength from within to, yes. well, we, we obviously. And, yeah, and mobility too, right? Like, I mean, uh, how many times do you have um, someone and they can't do a roll up, you know, a guy or a simple leg circle where like they're just begging for mercy on the leg circle? Yeah, totally. I mean, like legs, one leg circle, oh my God, like probably one of my nemesis, you know, like for a lot of years, you know, like actually, why am I doing this? Do you know, like, why, like, uh, do you know, like, that tight <laughs> hamstring thing, guys, hamstrings, uh, never story. Do you know, like, right. but, yeah, and then, like, I broke the back of it, and I'm like, oh, my God, now I get it. Do you know, like, yes. so, like, the perseverance right. of, do you know, like, actually going from A to B and connecting the dots, do you know? Right, yeah. Well, that's just it, and I think for men, trying to let them realize, you know, we were talking earlier about the perceptions talking about you know what what do we see when we like you said you google plotties and you see women you think eh, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure that's going to be for me yeah it's i think there's there's definitely a perception i know like when um i get a guy a, like first time you know never done plotties before it's like how i teach plotties it's a workout do you know like if um, obviously, if I've got rehabilitation clients, I don't teach that way. Do you know, like, but if right, it's if you are fit, healthy, do you know, there's no nothing wrong with your body. Yes. I'm gonna beast you on that first session. Do you know, if you're a guy, this is. Do you know, because if you don't yes. do that, they will never come back to you. If you start talking about tilting pelvis, rolling marbles from belly button to pubic bone, they're off, gone. Right. You know, like they're not in the room with you. Yes. They're just like thinking, we can't wait for this to be over. So mm -hmm. I definitely make 
a strong session for their first session. Do you know, like, it, it's all the time. Do you know, like, Absolutely. less they're injured. And I don't necessarily stay to, like, beginner exercise, intermediate exercises. Do you know, I'm looking at what their body's telling me. And then if I That's do a few it's... test runs, and then I'm like, oh, we're going for it. Do you know, like, mm -hmm. and I'll work them. And then I will work backwards from that point. Do you know, so they're, like, hooked. And then yes. I'll then start lacing the actual smart stuff back in do you know yeah, so actually changing it, approach. it down yeah um and, to, and that's how i basically got like the yeah. guides what i have do you know like it's just yeah that's 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 such a great way because you know it's it's a cheap gift to be able to make an exercise harder and it's really a high calling as a teacher or coach when we can regress exercises you can give them the pieces of the exercise and then they could build up or you could build it back down and you can just flow with it instead of saying, okay, we're doing beginner stuff today. We're doing intermediate stuff tomorrow. We're doing advanced stuff on Wednesday. You can be like, this is a gold star exercise. Let's see what you can do. Okay, let's do this piece today. And now, yeah. okay, you got that piece. Now we can add this piece to it. Okay, you got that. And next thing you know, they're doing that gold star exercise in the same session because you've been able to flow between that regression and progression. Yeah, like layering the move in and just being like, oh, I'm spiking that move. Do you know, like, what I was saying about, like, like taking it hard in that first session, do you know, like, it, it's obviously I read the client when they come in, do you know, I'm like, mm, do you know, like, sort of what they want, if if they're fit, do you know, like, I, you can just, like, you know, you can tell the ones what. Yes. If I start trying to give them too much fluff, mm -hmm. do you know, about, Pilates and you know how it's you know like oh you can just get into the nitty gritty make them sweat yes and not so much it is Pilates but we did just have a workout do you know but then I'll then you know like saying we'll sort of I'll take it back into learning the method if mm -hmm. that's what they want if they don't want it they just want to learn the same ex not same exercise learn the choreography aspect right. each or me right. teach them it do you know then that's where we go. I think I just went over the same bit again. But <laughs> <laughs> well, that's no, we're just saying the same. We're just make a move. You know? No, the bottom line is just make the move, make them sweat, make them appreciate that it's a workout. Um, when I was talking with one of my clients this morning, we were just kind of chatting about the perceptions and misperceptions with men and Pilates. He broke it down this way. He said, people think of Pilates as anti-testosterone. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, I can sort of see where where he's coming from that comment yeah definitely in classes do you know you might get one or two men in the class do you know like so it is a little bit like that fear of not looking good in front of a woman like if that's like in front of women do you know like looking right. silly like we were speaking like fear fear of looking stupid yeah. fear of looking not being good at it fear of incompetent yeah do you know like and uh, not being the best do you know like it's it's quite an exposing um um thing pilates do you know like it, it can expose it you know does. all your flaws do you know like yes. and and people it's not it is it's like therapy pilates is therapy it's therapy for your body mm -hmm. therapy for your brain do yes. you know like and if if you're not ready for therapy mm -hmm. do you know like it's it's, it's a scary it's, thing it's then. a tough pill to swallow yes yes oh absolutely so we're basically saying that every man is doing plies right now are your brave souls if you're out there because <laughs> you're you're putting yourself out there to be exposed for your muscle imbalances and for your weaknesses that you thought were strengths. Oh, totally. I mean, everybody has like their, uh, like the exercise which you hate, do you know, like, yes, like, and they, and they switch around, do you know, like mine, I'm nearly psychic and a hip twist like <laughs> yeah. i've got 38 inch legs do you know like yes. and, I'm, yeah. and they're not the skinniest legs they're big legs do you know like right. literally and hip twist and over this i i was just going through class and i went to hip twist and off i would go and I, and I even i went i went guys were like can we just take a minute my hip twist is on point today do you know yes, like, let's celebrate I'm, this <laughs> and they're like, I'm like yeah. today this is not an issue yeah. do you know like it's do you know so like that sort of there's a sort of vulnerability in, you know, actually being like, it's okay not, to not be perfect at that exercise. You yes. know, it's something what you're working your body through and you're, you're, as a Pilates teacher, you're still on a journey as well as what the, you. the student is, you know, with perpetual right. students. Yes. You know, Did you see the, um, 
Do you see that post I put up just before we started, the, my kneeling sidekick? No, uh, no, I didn't actually. Let me see if I can post this here for you. See if you can see this. Yeah, I think, let me just, wait. Oh, I can't move y'all. Yo, yeah, do you know, it's, it's a, I think for guys, nearly sidekick. That's, you know, yeah. like, let's just see, super, the super anguish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can see it. It's like. Yeah, I was, it. um. I was doing, that was an online class um, and the instructor was going through that and my wife was walking by with the camera and uh, yeah, so she put that up there and was like, yeah, I, that's, that's pretty much how I felt there, my face. Yeah. Like, even though I lo it's that love to hate, I, I know I hate it, but I know my body needs to do it. Do you know, like if you're hating something, it's generally because your body needs it, like you have to. Yes. Sort of work, bear your, bear your flaws, you know, like bear, bear your right. weak points. And if it's, if you've got that weak point there, you've probably got it in about four of her exercises somewhere yes. in the, in the mm -hmm. method. Absolutely. I mean, if you speak, if you take it down another layer, that just speaks to us as, as human beings and our desire to always be wanting to, you know, wanting to better ourselves, right? Like, I mean, you can be content with where you're at on a personal level too, or you can strive to get better and that, causes the discomfort of having to work extra hours or have that hard conversation or whatever it is to get to that next plateau, right? Yeah, it's, yeah, it, it's whether you fight or flight, isn't it? It's whether you're going to actually make, like, make it happen, you know, or whether you, you're just going to crumble and be like, well, I'm just going to stay at this level, you know, like, I, yes. I don't want to push myself into the uncomfort zone, you know, like, yes. the, the part where you actually do feel the fear, you know, like, yes. and actually... I probably like on that, like I'm an anxious person, but I'm quite good at harnessing my anxiety to make myself and drive it. Do you know, it's actually a healthy anxiety what I have, yes. do you know, I don't okay. find it debilitating, but I do have, even before we came on, I'm like, oh my God, do you know, do, 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 do. Mm. and my kind of was just like, it goes, because you care, do you know, like, you, do you know, like yes. that's what makes you the teacher what you are because you, yes. you have a, um, a compassion, a caring nature. You want people to achieve, you know, like that's something right. where you can't, you can't necessarily learn them skills. They're just mm -hmm. something what you already had, you know, like yes. to be caring and, you know, to basically care what people right. think you're, about. You're on track with that, James. I appreciate you coming on with that because we, uh, I think it's an amazing thing when we can put ourselves in situations that are a little bit scary, a little bit uncomfortable and the thing that's pushing us into those situations is our passion for the thing that we're doing it for. Yeah, totally. Like, yeah, you're actually, yeah, you actually cause the, the anxiety because you want to be better at the thing what you want to be better at, but it makes you, yeah, you know, it's definitely my catalyst. You know, like, <laughs> yes, it's, yes. I, I, I know you're going to teach it. I even get it when I go to teach a class still. Do you know, like, I still of get that, that hit of, um, just nervous energy, energy right yeah do you know totally but then then once you get going and that energy then turns into that's your sort of yes. that's your light do you know like right. that's what your your energy what you then give to your class yes do you know like you convert yeah. it rather than it compressing you you admit it out yes like it's like you harness your superpower and you just <laughs> yeah. put it but, so i think that that's a healthy thing i mean like i think that as men or you know as human beings, basically, if I, the way I look at it, if I never felt that little, little thread of like nervousness before I pressed live or before I went, stepped in front of a class, I question if I even care. Yeah, I agree. Right? Like, it's only because I actually care about doing this well, why I have that little bit of anxiety. And then to channel that in a way to come back to a place where I'm like, you know, I'm actually pretty good at this. Like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing with my life right now. You have to break through that every single time. And it, it's, it doesn't wear off. I don't think it should wear off. I think we should have to just fight through that just a little bit every single time. Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hadouken. <laughs> yes. there's, a, there's a little comment here, a question. Let me see what this says here. Can anxiety be mixed up with fear? Well, can anxiety be mixed up with fear? I think before I even answer that question, uh, James, I'll ask you this. Is fear a bad thing? No, definitely not. Do you know, I, do, I feel like as long as you don't like, like for, for me personally, a, like a great book 
which I like read in, oh God, about 10, 12 years ago, is feel the fear and do it anyway. Do you uh, know, like acknowledge that you're scared of it, but don't let it stop you doing it. Do you know, like it's not yes. like if, the f like we all think we're it. We all, yes. do you know, like, oh, do you know, I can't be bothered. Do you know, like, but the fear of, do you know, like if you, what's the worst, what can happen? Obviously, do you know, like in terms of, mm -hmm. do you know, like setting up an online class? Yes. Do it. Nobody turns up. Oh, well, you tried it, do you know, but don't right. try it. And do, you would have never known if anybody mm -hmm. had turned up. So it's, yes. um, yeah, I think f fear is a good thing as long as you're, you, you're harnessing the fear, do you know, to make it work for you and you're not making yes. it, uh, and it's not crippling you. So it's all very personal to the person i think fear do you know like because you could Absolutely. be scared of being bit by a shark you know scared of you know doing an online class you know if there's different levels of fear I yes suppose. absolutely james in the in the comments section can you just type out the name of that book yeah for, um, someone's just asking about that and do it anyway And um, that's by Susan Jeffers. Jeffers. Okay. But we're in the room. I could have paper book off the shelf. Uh, Jeff. I think it's okay. Susan Jeffers or Jeffers. Susan. Mm -hmm. I'll put Jeffers. While you're doing that, I'm reading off this question and it makes me think about it a little bit more is what happens when you don't know exactly what you're doing and the unknown. Um, what do you, when you, it's almost like I'm answering the question with the question every time here. When you don't know exactly what you're doing, I even question that because I know from my own life, I have taken classes, done apprenticeships, been online classes, watched videos. I have so much in me and only a small percentage of that has come out in the way that I teach and, and interact because we've taken in so much knowledge. We all do that. We have, we've taken more than we actually get a chance to apply. So I think that in those moments that I'm scared or I feel like I don't know what I'm doing, I think I need to just simply trust that it's in me in those moments and take that step out anyways. Yeah, I totally, it's, I think that always looking back at something, you know, like I just, just taking a little minute to actually look back and be like, no, I do actually have the skill for this. Or, you know, depending on the situation, because you've you obviously got yourself to a certain point, you know, so if you've, you can always look back to look forward, you know, like it's, yes. you can always learn from your mistakes sort of thing, you know, like if there's something specifically what you're scared of, you know, why you're scared of it, break it back down, you know, like, yes. like, Chunk, chunk it down, do you know, like, because something, so if you look at the big picture, do you know, like, oh, you can look mm -hmm. at chunk it down and make it smaller so it's more um, achievable, quicker, do you know, like, so it's, yes. I think that goes back to the fear thing. It does, it does. And, you know, within that fear thing is also knowing your own personal boundaries in terms of the scope of what you know. So, yeah, totally. you know, yeah, so I understand if a person comes to me and they have a certain condition or an issue or something I haven't heard of, I'm not going to fake it till I make it. I'm going to understand that this is this, the end of what I know. And I'm going to hand you off to the right person who is already in my circle that can, that can help you with that. Yeah, thing. totally. And I think that's a bigger, that's actually more powerful, do you know, like to actually have a network of people where you can be like, do you know what, this is not my remit. Do you know, this is not my skill set where, do you know, like, I'm, I'm going to give you to somebody who is, do you know, yes. like, for you. Do you know, like, and I think that's a really powerful place to be uh, as a teacher. It's you know? knowing yourself. Like, James, I usually, I, I usually never ask this question without priming someone for this question first. But I'm going to ask you anyways. Go on, man. Who are you? Who am I? So... Oh my god. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's a big it's question, tough, right? though, isn't it? Yeah. It's like it's it's do you know, so who I who I am and who I aspire to be is you know, like somebody who helps people, do you know, like in whatever every job I've ever had has been in a customer facing role. Do you know like okay. so yes. obviously I know but in terms of my personality traits, 
I'm uh, an influence. I like fluffy things. So I gravitate towards making people happy and, you know, like providing service and, you know, taking people from A to B, you know, and I've done that in every job since I left education, you know, like that's something. Yes. So I definitely say who I am I as a person, I'd probably say my answer to that would be, um, <laughs> I just had that in my head, the long spiel, uh, you know, like, customer facing like like literally making people feel good do you know like as yes. a hairdresser i make people feel good as a yes. pilates teacher i make people feel good in whatever yes. way that is whether it's a, a fixing their body and um, working their body out you know like it's yeah so i definitely say without being primed for it i'd say i'm definitely who i am is i make people feel good or oh, that's what yeah. I aspire to do. And yes. just in da daily life, not just in, in a Pilates sense. Yes, exactly. No, that's, that's exactly it. And, and when you understand that, that overarches into everything that you do. And it's not about what you do as a career, because whatever career you have, that's going to have expression. Yeah, totally. I think it's, if you look at, like, for me personally, every job I've ever done, I don't want to say I've, I've always done very well in it. Do you know, like I've always, and that's not a, that's not a, a coincidence. It's, it's a fact because I cared, because, you know, going back to all these other things we've spoke about, it's the inherent nature of who I am as a person and how I was brought up and the experiences, yes. what I had as a child, you know, which then took me into my adolescence and, you know, then my adulthood. And mm -hmm. it's all, it's all sort of relative, um, to the start you know like I always anything I want to do like if the door's not opening I'll just knock a little bit harder do you know like or yes. I'll do you know like it's I never see things as a barrier do you know I always see right. like things opportunities as a, yeah, and challenges you know, to, but not yeah. roadblocks yeah definitely not and if something if something doesn't happen do you know like in the first instance do you know like I've I'm like, oh, yeah. But then nine times out of 10, it goes round on the journey and I end up going back on the path what, yeah, maybe took a longer route, but I got back on the path yes. in the end. Do you know, like yes. it's, and that's happened in all my jobs. Do you know, like, you know, something comes up, do you know, like it's not what I wanted it to be. And then a little bit down the line, I'm back on the track again yes. and, do you know, yes. but doing even better than what I was doing before. Do you know, so it's right. definitely. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. A common thing which which I find, you know, like it's, it's I think it's like a, well, it's, I don't think, it's definitely a mindset, you know, like it if is. if you, like, if you can dream it, you can achieve it, you know, like if mm -hmm. you can make something happen, you know, definitely for yourself. Yes, yes. And coming back to knowing who we are, you being someone who likes to make people feel good, that takes away the sting of any fear that comes because you know that if you're in a situation where you can't help someone feeling good means connecting them with your best friend who's an osteopath who can help them or you know referring them to another personal you know Pilates person who specializes with people who are overweight or so or whatever it is you're still going to make sure that person feels good by connecting them with the person that is going to make them feel good yeah totally Do you know, like, then it's it's, it's not the pressure's not on us right yeah, definitely. It's not being afraid to, you know, just know when your limit is, but, you know, but still making somebody happy by a referral, you know, like giving a piece of advice, you know, which, you know, like I get like messages all the time about, you know, like, how did you, how did you start your career? Do you know, it looks like you're doing really well. And, you know, like, and I'll give my time, you know, texting and emailing back, you know, all these questions. Because I think back at the start of my, um, like Pilates journey I had a really strong mentorship and I think that you know if you can give that back to anybody in whatever way yes. shape or form yes. do you know like so they that's a get, gift yeah do you know like yeah definitely do you know like because I definitely think when you're at the start of your Pilates journey do you know like it's definitely ups and downs roller coaster rides you hate mm -hmm. it you love it you hate it you love it you hate it you love it <laughs> Um, <laughs> and like you were like why did you even start doing this 
And yes. then, so if you can give that like little bit of help and support to people, you know, like, who have not, don't even know, you know, they don't even know their personal circumstances, but, mm -hmm. you know, just give a little bit of help, advice, and, you know, just calm the nerve and be like, look, it is going to be okay, you know, like, if this is natural, what you're going through. Yes. Yeah, I've had that, and, and Racy is saying that, well, mentorship is strong, and, and and it's it's so true that that's that is the thing i know i've had people talk me off the ledge so many times with my uh, my, my apprenticeship man oh it's time i just wanted to just quit or like i know other stuff i could be fine without this what does this really mean like what's the search of <laughs> like you talk yourself out of it and then you come along and then someone will talk you back into you're like yeah you're right okay i'm gonna finish this and yeah, yeah that struck a nerve when you I said think that <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah and i think like i think everyone has that journey do you know like, i don't think there's anybody really what doesn't have the the roller coaster of um like learning do you know like mm -hmm. it's definitely uh one what everybody experiences yes yeah yeah Hey, James, I, I'm not going to keep you any longer. I know that you have like 45 minutes here and we just burned 40 in like a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's going good. Yeah. Um, what can I say? No, it's been it's been a pleasure. I can't even remember what we've spoken about, you know, because it was just sort of like <laughs> just flowing, you know. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's why I reposted and I'll I'll make the highlights of this and I'll send it back to you. We talked about like men and their perceptions of Pilates. We talked about fear, uh, the healthy nervousness and anxiety that we feel, like the, almost the pregame jitters, how we get through that, knowing who we are and how we bring that to our, to our sessions. Touch on some good stuff today, man. Like yeah, that's like, like it's, it's yeah. definitely something to reflect on. Cause obviously like we, we didn't, we sort of knew loosely what we we're going to speak about. I'm a bit like, oh. I feel like I'm going to read Feel the Fear and do it anyway again and see what, <laughs> yeah. and see what I've sort of forgot about along the way, you know? So yeah. that's, uh, with that popping up. No, but thank you so much for uh, inviting me. It's uh, a, like, yeah, a pleasure. Yeah, you know, to, my pleasure, to, to man. Let's, let's, let's keep this uh, conversation going. I'd love to just talk some more business with you and just uh, see how, like, the business is going. Let's just bounce some ideas off each other to, uh, you know, keep keep growing that. And, and like you're saying, running and chasing that dollar going from place to place so there's so many different strategies for that and yeah. i'd love to learn from what you're working on next and i can i can share stuff that i'm working on as well and, and we can all yeah. just get better yeah definitely i'm totally up for that i'd love to uh yeah do you know because pre-lockdown i had a full like plan for 2020 but obviously the plan is <laughs> it, definitely yeah. not going to be happening probably for the next like year yeah you know? <laughs> so yeah so the plan changed uh yeah. from the you know Cool. Well, I'll have you on some uh, sometime in the future again too, man. Like you know, the the key, the I guess the way of saying it is like the the whole point of a first date is to get a second date, right? So, <laughs> yeah. And the way that we, we we've talked about so many good things, I want to just continue this conversation. So um, I'll send you the the link and um, I'll let you get going now. That's great. Um, Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate and it, man. It tonight. I really appreciate yes. it. My awesome. pleasure. Okay, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll sign you off here and I'll keep talking to our peeps for a bit. Thank you very much, mate. Have a great Thanks. afternoon. Thanks. Bye, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today on Core Conversations. This organic platform has been made possible by amazing people like yourself. So if you're a Pilates instructor or a movement specialist of some kind and you wanna be a guest, please message me. If you're in some other field and you know the messages just resonate with you, message me, I'd love to have you on. All of our messages connect and for some reason, they all help us in this battle. We're all in this game together, so I'd love to hear from you. Let your words be life to someone else. Check out our website, personalvictory.ca. Click the Core Conversations page to see who our upcoming guests are, and I will see you next time on Core Conversations.